Welcome to another video of Euro Channel. Today I'm talking about how to boost your testosterone naturally. Who needs it, who doesn't and who's likely to benefit from testosterone replacement therapy. My name is Stefan Buntrock. I'm a urologist with special interests both in sexual medicine and sports medicine. The name of my channel is Euro Channel because it is dedicated to urological topics that are frequently searched for on YouTube and things that I have on my mind and want to share with you. So if you like my content, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any new urological input. You might, however, find that not all of my videos are in English, which is due to the fact that my native language is German and that I also got a degree in Nordic studies and spent most of my residency in the Scandinavian countries. So Swedish and Norwegian are still very accessible. If you're watching from India, have a look at my approach in Hindi and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now let's talk about testosterone. There are a huge number of videos on YouTube dealing with how to boost your testosterone naturally. However, there seem to be misconceptions about what testosterone does in the body and what we need it for. Consequently, elevating the testosterone level might be advisable for some, whereas it would be probably of no use for the majority of the community watching this video. So let's dive right in and have a closer look at testosterone. Testosterone is the male sex hormone. That doesn't mean that women don't have it, they do, but in very small amounts. Testosterone is mainly produced in the testicles and a small amount comes from the adrenal glands. Of note, there is a circadian rhythm of excretion, meaning that small amounts are released from the testicles every day in the early morning hours. This is important to know because disruption of sleep interferes with this pattern but we'll come to that later. Largely, testosterone defines male gender, the formation of male organs, body composition and behavior. As a matter of fact, the male fetus is subjected to a testosterone surge quite early during pregnancy. The male brain bathes in testosterone, which is important for its further development and formation of male patterns of behavior. And here's another interesting fact. Nature is female. Without testosterone, there would be only women, because that's the basic construction plan. In daily life, the task of testosterone is to maintain function of the tissues. It affects bone metabolism, muscle growth, function of the prostate, and is an important promoter of sexual function. Without it, sexual desire is reduced, erectile function, and even ejaculation is compromised. Testosterone also influences the psyche and mood states. While a deficiency goes along with depressive states, doping with anabolic steroids can lead to aggressive behavior and mania. In physiologic concentrations, which is somewhere between 350 nanogram per deciliter and 1100 nanogram per deciliter, there is hardly any relation between concentration and biological effectiveness. The level of testosterone changes throughout the day, with levels being the highest in the morning hours and between individuals. It makes therefore no sense to compare testosterone values with the normal limits. Like if John had 800 nanograms per deciliter and Mike had 500 nanograms per deciliter, John wouldn't be better off just because he had higher levels. Mike wouldn't be less manly, less strong, less muscular because in between the normal range it doesn't matter what the individual value is. This is a misunderstanding among all those natural testosterone boosters out there. Sure, you can try to enhance your testosterone, but you will probably go from normal to normal. Even if you'd be able, like say, manage to raise your value by 20%, you would still be within normal limits. So who would actually profit from natural testosterone boosting interventions? Not John and Mike, who are in their 20s, keep a normal weight and train regularly. It's men like Bob, who are in their late 40s to 50s. Three kids and a 9 to 5 job has changed his life completely. He has not a single minute of the day left to spend on physical exercise. He drives to work by car, sits all day, drives back home, eats dinner and falls asleep on the couch while watching Netflix and eating potato chips. 
Once in Adonis his body has transformed in a size he himself would never have thought to be possible. With years passing, his obesity caused his blood pressure to rise, he got diabetes, sleep apnea and his cholesterol? Don't ask, you wouldn't want to know. The last time he had an erection was at their 15th anniversary and that's been a while. But frankly, he doesn't feel in the mood anyway. This life feels kind of depressive to him. Bob is an example of a toxic cocktail regarding testosterone. By the time you are 40, your testosterone levels will drop naturally by approximately 1% per year. That's okay, the body can deal with it. However, an unhealthy lifestyle leading to obesity will cause a vicious circle called the metabolic syndrome as described with Bob. The metabolic syndrome will decrease testosterone well below normal levels leading to depressive states of mood, loss of sexual interest, erectile dysfunction and even diabetes. Yes. The metabolic syndrome promotes diabetes, which will let testosterone levels drop, which in itself will worsen diabetes. That's the vicious circle. It would make sense for Bob to try to revert this development, change his dietary habits, train regularly, no alcohol, no smoking, enough sleep, normalize body weight. This would boost his testosterone and he would probably gain a lot from this. Most probably he would, however, need some additional help in adding testosterone replacement therapy in the beginning. Speaking of sleep, since the release of testosterone follows a certain rhythm and is released in the early morning hours, every disturbance of sleep will interfere with this rhythm and potentially lower testosterone levels. However, just telling somebody to get enough sleep is sometimes not enough. It would work for John and Mike, but not for Bob. Because of his sleep apnea, his pattern of sleep is fundamentally disrupted. Daytime sleepiness and a drop in performance are usual symptoms. Low testosterone because of his lack of normal sleep is only part of this package. Back to John and Mike and boosting testosterone. There is only one way to really make a difference when it comes to elevating your testosterone and this is doping. Users of anabolic steroids have levels up to times 100 and more the normal range. They often combine steroids with other drugs, aromatize inhibitors to stop the body from turning testosterone into the female hormone estradiol, insulin growth hormone, insulin-like growth factor and so on. Doping is not only illegal, but there is also a high price to be paid. Sure enough, it will get you the muscle growth that you desire, but at a considerable cost. Most users of anabolic steroids develop structural changes in the hearts, leading to sudden cardiac death, cardiomyopathy, which is a dangerous disease of the heart muscle itself, arrhythmias and cardiac infarction. Not sometime in a distant and hazy future, but quite soon while still at a young age. There are more risks. The blood will get thicker and might clot, resulting in stroke. The liver will also suffer. Sometimes liver cancer might form. In long-term users, the testicles will start to shrink. Erectile dysfunction and loss of libido are seen quite frequently. Testosterone will also be converted into estradiol, the female sex hormone. This is done in the fatty tissue of the body. Some users of anabolic steroids have estradiol levels comparable to young healthy women. No wonder female breast formation is one of the side effects of testosterone use. With high steroid levels mood changes occur displaying side effects as aggressive and violent behavior. It might also be difficult to get off the steroids mentally. Depression is quite commonly seen among those who try to get off not to mention problems in sexual function. Many users are not aware of the risks they are putting themselves at. I don't know how it is in other countries, but at least in Germany it seems to be okay if a physician prescribes anabols because it is now under medical control. You know what? This is still doping and a doctor is no safety shield that will keep the harmful side effects away. This is why I would never go along with prescribing testosterone or anabolic steroids to one of my patients for this purpose. 
Testosterone replacement therapy, however, is another story. Men like Bob with a proven testosterone deficiency, symptoms and no contraindications will get a prescription for a testosterone gel. This is also because low testosterone levels can be harmful for bone health, the cardiovascular system and even be a risk for prostate cancer. But this is another video. I hope you followed along up to this point and I'd certainly appreciate if you watched some of my other videos. Goodbye for now, see you next time. <music>